Hey, hey, this is Magum, so we are going to continue. We are going to continue buried. We are in chapter four, I believe. We're just going around to, um. Ooh. Don't do that window. Look at blinds. It's a big fight. Oh, uh, we have this creature thing on us. So, now we have to decide. Do we want to release the rifle and punch it? Or scream for help? But Amy is busy working on the keypad trying to get the door. So we're going to release the rifle and we're going to punch it. See what that does. I do my best to give one last save to push it off. But my hands melt there. I curse myself for wasting so many bullets earlier. Two busy appendages wrap around my left shoulder and I feel a white hot pain fill my body. The tentacles burn and I realize that some are actually going through my shoulder like a kid pulling apart the stitches of a doll. But then you see the creature extending its tentacles in your aggravation, in aggravation while making that static screeching noise. The creature flickers, releasing me suddenly. With a shudder and a cry of desperation, I roll away from it and see that a large hole has appeared in its luminous core. The creature disappears into thin air and reappears a few feet, 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 feet from me, retreating back towards the bio camera. Ama looks over at me from her terminal at the end door, looking petrified. Then it stands several feet away, holding a shotgun. He walks slowly towards us and is clearly just as scared and out of sorts as we are. You okay, boss? Yes. But his eyes are on me. They are looking to the creature, trying to understand exactly what he has just seen. Just seen. About 15 minutes ago, I heard the door to that maintenance room unlock. Dennis says, point to the room I tried to bust my way into earlier. Ah, Amy says, when I did the override up in the command center and unlocked all the small doors down here, including that maintenance room. I went inside there and hid. Dennis continues, while I was waiting for you to come back, I found a massive trunk. And there were a few guns in it, so I grabbed one. Grab this one, says Pat and Shotgun. I'm glad you're safe. I know you're glad with weapons, but I'm glad you're safe. Thanks, boss, he says. Me too. She doesn't break eye contact with the panel. Almost done, she replies. Sounding about warning, a shot riots off the wall behind Amy's head. Started, we look around. Confused, did Dennis's gun go off? We have another shot blast near us again. We all drop to the floor. I look around, wondering... Who or what could possibly be shooting us? Those creatures don't do anything that sounds remotely like gunfire. Then I see him. Marcus. I should have killed him when I had the chance. He has a rifle and is walking towards us. An insane look in his eyes. You all deserve to die, he screams, unleashing another round that I hear whiz by my head. That's a little bit too close. Dennis doesn't hesitate. He stands up and shoots at Marcus, causing him to retreat. How much longer? I'm not going to yell at her, because then that just make it worse. Almost there, she says quietly. She makes a few final key presses and says, Done. The door is open to the noise of hydraulics and a whoosh of air. With Marcus pinned down by Dennis' gunfire, we start moving towards the door. At that moment, another creature jerks into existence around the corner between us and Marcus. Shit! Marcus says and starts unloading on into it. Then he learns that the same lesson we did. This only slows the creature down. Marcus gives one last look and then turns and runs off in another direction. Dennis, Amy, and I climb up ahead and head through the doors. Moving on. Nothing more than adrenaline. As you look longly at the maintenance room, Dennis took the shotgun from. You get into the hangar, Dennis says. I'll get some more firepower. Satisfied with the plan, Amy heads to the door. We're scrambling aside, finally inside the hangar. Dennis approaches from behind, holding several several guns and looking like a kid who grabbed an armful of Halloween candy. Amy reaches out for a 9 millimeter one hand. Dennis turns out to me, turns to me and holds out a shotgun and a handgun for the Both look deadly. The shotgun looks more powerful, but the handgun would probably be more precise. Um, we're even precise. Dennis should be able to shoot. Whatever. Because I think he'd be more easier than that. I select the handgun and am comforted by the way it seems to fit perfectly into my shaky grip. There are more creatures coming and as many as a dozen. They are floating down the hall quickly. Their tentacles slithering. They made their light. The way that their light seems to mingle together is almost beautiful. Close the door, yelled Amy. She dashes to another terminal mounted on the inside of the hangar doors and tries desperately to close them. It's not working, she says, with tears in her eyes. This terminal is disabled. That's not good. Dennis looks through us, looks through the open doors, readying himself to shoot the first monster that nears us. Should we try to slow down a few, or just run for it, he asks. He's got it ready. Well, let's just book it. The faster we go, the faster we go. Good idea, says Amy. With that, we turn around and we turn around and sprint out into the hangar floor. Alright. That's a big hangar. There's some blood on the floor, too. 
This room is enormous, so large that it call to call it a room seems silly. <coughs> Sorry. A large concrete floor stretches out below an expansive loft to sit in. The area is mostly empty, except for one side, which has rows and rows of metal barrels. Back on the far wall is a lit area that seems to expose more rooms, labs, and machinery. Also in the rear of the hangar, I can see some kind of chamber chamber or control center. Then as I follow Amy across the hangar floor, behind us a series of rough slithering sound tells us the creatures have made their way into the hangar. From somewhere up ahead, a loud buzzing noise sounds out. It reminds me of the slight buzzing noise I heard in the forest, the noise that I've tried to avoid. I look ahead and see that in the far back of the hangar, a bright red light is flashing. A small hatch or door below the light. The hatch is open and I can see a shape inside it. I can barely make out the figure of a man standing there holding an industrial microphone. As soon as I see him, I hear his huge amplified voice. He blares down over an intercom system and he sounds pissed. I don't know who the hell you are, he says. This is government facility on lockdown in the air or protocols to shit. I assume the curse coincides with the exact moment he sees the creatures. They are making their way through the hangar doors. There are maybe 20 feet between us and the creatures. I act indistinctly, firing twice as the handgun comes alive in my hands. One shot goes into the core of one monster, causing it to drift backwards. Another shot slows down another. The accuracy I get with the dying millimeter is amazing. Amy and Dennis take the cue and start firing as well. The floor becomes littered with swirling white fluid from the wounded creatures' of bodies, but they are not slowing down. The alarm keeps streaking behind us. When I turn to see if anything has changed back there, I chip over my feet. That's not good. I hit the ground hard, and in almost a comic fashion, slide several feet across the floor. From the ground, I see that we have managed to turn our back for them, but I also see that my estimate of a dozen is off. There are at least 20 of them. They're sick, dim light, light sinister and gloomy. Their pins just seem to bind together as they come forward. My only hope of survival is that the man in the far doorway has somehow shuts the hangar door. His voice comes through blaring over the intercom again, broken by the booming noises of the gunfire that we are laying down. Run here! Towards the isolation chamber! I'm not sure how much time we have. I realize that I can sprint ahead of Amy and Dennis, or I can hang back and give him cover. Well, Amy is probably freaking out, but Dennis is hurting, so let's just cover him. Go inside where that guy is, I yell, say. Um, make sure we don't have any of those things right on our tails. I'll hold him back for a while. I know it sounds macho, but it also feels like the right thing to do. I have to at least try to give us some kind of chance for escape. So as Amy and Dennis run through the doors, I blast in the next thing I see moving. All I get from my troubles is a sad like hiss and a high-pitched whistling noise. I am able to beat them back a bit, force them to scatter. Each flicker of light is a small victory. If nothing else, I'm buying Amy and Dennis time. When I'm certain there is nothing more I can do, I turn and run. I hustle quickly, catching up to Amy and Dennis, who stop and turn to provide me with cover fire. There, Amy says, pointing to the small door where the man was standing earlier. The swarm is less than 15 feet away now, so furious that they are pushing through one another to get to us. I raise a handgun and fire, taking my time to aim. I hit one in the spider-like part of his body. I fire again, this time taking one in the core. I place two more rounds into this creature, eventually causing it to move backwards. We are in the middle of the hangar floor now, the isolation chamber ahead and the monsters behind. Beside me, Dennis also fires. The kick of the gun jolts him, probably a result of him being weakened from the blood loss. His shot lands true, though causing a jerking stumbling and a flickering of its light. We're almost in, Amy yells as we get close to the door we hope will save us. Um, but you know what? We're gonna get Dennis in, because he's, he's the one really injured. Get inside, I tell Amy and Dennis, motioning for to get moving with my gun. I open the door and give Dennis a push toward it. He resists, but more eager try taking down another of these beasts before he makes it to your safety, but he eventually gives in. I wait a beat to make sure Amy's inside too. I fire off a few rounds on the creatures that are still headed for us hoping to slow him down. When Amy and Dennis clear the door, I nearly dash inside, but then I feel something hot seep into my back. Roger! Dennis yells. The pain from my back is so immense that I barely notice the fact that I'm being lifted from the floor. I look down and see that one of the creatures is using its flowing arms to grab me by my waist, its tentacles wrapping around me. It lifts me into the air, as if presenting me as a trophy to its friends. I try to focus, attempting to angle my arm in a way that would allow me to aim the hang on and place a bullet in its body. But it's shaking me violently and its body parts are appearing and disappearing in a way that makes no sense. Another oddity of its structure. I can literally do nothing more than hang there like a ragdoll, hoping to be saved. As it continues to host me up, uh, screeching its approval, Dennis comes back out of the room and fires off a shot. 
The bullet catches the monster on the underside of its core, sending it backwards and causing it to freeze for a moment. It releases me and I hit the ground, dropping my gun again, finding myself unable to breathe. I feel slightly dizzy, but that fades when I see Dennis is still standing outside the door. He's firing into the beast like a madman. He doesn't see the one to his left coming in along the edge of the wall. Just push him out the way. We're not going to yell at him. I try to dash towards Dennis to push him out of the way, but it's not enough time. God damn it. The creature jerks out of existence and reappears right behind him. By the time Dennis turns and sees the creature coming, it has already dawned. Drawing several of its pinches back to strike. Dennis tries to raise his gun, but it's knocked out of, out of the way by one of the tentacles. A second tentacle strikes Dennis and is spun around and thrown off balance by the attack. Dennis catches himself before falling. The third tentacle wraps around Dennis' forearm and I can see it squeeze, tightening instantly. The tip of the appendage patches clean through his hand, its blood soaked tip poking out through his palm. Dennis' face grimaces with the pain as he tries to wrench his arm free. But the creature's tentacle has his hand speared like a nail through the wood. In a moment of dark clarity, I realize I can free him with a clean shot of the monster's tentacle. But it will likely mean blowing off Dennis's hand. Dennis is blowing Dennis's hand off. Dennis! I yell over the creature's high pitched static sound. Can you get free? I have a shot. Maybe. No! Dennis grabs his creature, tossing around by his hand like a Don't shoot! I can get free. I can't tell if he's right, but the other monsters are starting to encircle him. I need to act fast. Oh. Do we shoot his hand off, or do you try and see if he can do it? Oh. Um. I mean, we wait for him, but the monsters are starting to encircle him. We don't need to, but shoot his hand off would be pretty pit. I gotta shoot his hand off. It's the only way. I decided to take Dennis' hand to save him. If I don't take the shot while I have it, they're going to kill him. In a last-ditch effort, I try getting a good shot on the monster, but there is none. It'll hurt Dennis even worse if I try. I'll hurt Dennis even I take aim and fire off a shot. The shot lands perfectly and results in a lot of blood and screams from both Dennis and the creatures. Dennis's hand disappears into a spray of red and the monster's appendage just simply yep, fades away. Ahead. It literally seems to wink out of existence. The creature screeches while Dennis hits the floor, wailing in pain. The reality of what I've done sets in and nearly pairs me. Get him, Amy says. I'll cover you. I nod, staring from the side of what I've done to Dennis. I stumble out of the door. Amy is true to her word. She fires off a few rounds into the approaching monsters as I make kicks to Dennis. I grab hold of him with my good arm. I drag him backwards as fast as I can, nearly falling down in the process. When I reach the doorway, Amy reaches down and helps me drag his body, the final few feet into the room. She manages to pull off another shot. When I looked where she had, I see another dozen of so monsters. The monsters. Dennis is raving in pain, and when he looks up to me, he's sneering. You crazy asshole! He screams. He shudders violently, sweat and tears coursing down his pale face. Amy slams the door behind us. Finally, we're inside the room, hopefully safe within what looks to be an isolation chamber of sorts. Along the frame, a little electrical lock beeps as the door is secured. End of chapter four. All right. What did we? How did we fare with others? Self-control, but us and 51% of players shot to kill the creature instead of just weaken it, so half of us. Keep them at bay. You and 41% of the players distracted the creature instead of shooting it, so not, it's almost even. You and 57% of players took the handgun instead of the shotgun. Wow. A lot. You and 57% of players disobeyed Dennis Richards not to shoot, causing him to lose his hand. That's, that's a big one right there. But... I think chapter 5 is our last one. So, this video may be shorter than usual for Bird, but we're going to go ahead and do chapter 5 in the next video. So that way we have the whole thing in one. We're just finishing off chapter 4 here. We're going to do the whole chapter 5 in the next video. But, um, yeah, I hope you like this. I am actually doing I, I don't know... Maybe some of them I could have done differently. What I could have done for some of the choices. But that this is just like I did most of what I almost everyone else did too. But um yeah. Uh leave a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace!